Hi, my name is Kelsey Wong, and I am super excited to be auditioning for Crash Course Computer Science. Now, I am in no way an expert in computer science, but it is definitely one of my passions, and I am super excited that you guys are taking on this awesome project. Now, something that I have experience in is hosting. I have hosted a plethora of school events, I'm part of my local theater, and I'm also the head of the drama team at my church. Now, you probably have a million audition videos to go through, so enough of me talking. Well, technically the next part that you're gonna watch is actually gonna be more of me talking, but it's gonna be your script, so technically it would be me talking, but your words and, you know, let's not overthink this. Just watch the next part. Hello world, I'm Kelsey Wong and welcome to Crash Course Computer Science. Over the course of this series, we're going to go from bits, bytes, transistors, and logic gates, all the way to operating systems, e-commerce, and robots. No, we are not going to teach you how to program. Instead, we're going to be exploring a broad swath of computing topics, both as a discipline and as a technology. Computers have become the lifeblood of our world. If they were to suddenly turn off all at once, the power grid would shut down, cars would crash, planes would fall, water treatment plants would stop, stock markets would freeze, trucks with food wouldn't know where to deliver, employees wouldn't get paid. <sighs> Even most non-computer objects like DFTBA shirts and the chair I'm sitting on are made in factories powered by computers. Computer nearly touches every aspect of our daily lives. And this isn't the first time we've seen this sort of transformation through technology. Advances in manufacturing during the Industrial Revolution brought a new scale to human systems in agriculture, industry, and domestic life. Mechanization meant superior harvest and readily available food, mass produced goods, cheaper and faster travel and communication, and in general, a better quality of life. Computing technology is doing the same right now, from precision agriculture and medical equipment to global telecommunications and educational opportunities. And very soon, new frontiers like virtual reality and self-driving cars. We are living in a time likely to be remembered as the electronic age. Because ASCII was such an early standard, it became widely used and critically allowed different computers built by different companies to exchange data. This ability to universally exchange information is called interoperability. However, it did have a major limitation. It was really only designed for English. Fortunately, there are eight bits in a byte, not seven, and it soon became popular to use codes 128 through 255, previously unused for national characters. In the US, those extra numbers were largely used to encode additional symbols like mathematical notation, graphical elements, and common accented characters. On the other hand, while the Latin characters were used universally, Russian computers used the extra code to encode Krillic characters, and Greek computers, Greek letters, and so on. Nevertheless, national character codes worked pretty well for most countries. The problem was, if you opened an email written in Latvian on a Turkish computer, the result was completely incomprehensible. Things totally broke with the rise of computing in Asia, as languages like Chinese and Japanese have thousands of characters. There was no way to encode all those characters in 8 bits. In response, each country invented multi-byte encoding schemes, all of which were mutually incompatible. The Japanese were so familiar with this encoding problem that they had a special name for it. Mojibake, which means scrambled text. And so it was born. Unicode. One format to rule them all, devised in 1992 to finally do away with all of the different international schemes and replace them with one universal encoding scheme. Unicode had space for over a million codes, enough for every single character from every language ever used. More than 120,000 of them in over 100 types of script. Plus, space for mathematical symbols and even graphical characters like emoji. 
You might be wondering about types of media beyond numbers and letters, like photos, movies, and music. In the same way that ASCII defines a scheme for encoding letters as binary numbers, other file formats such as MP3s or GIFs use binary numbers to encode sound or colors of a pixel. Most important is to recognize that under the hood, it all, become, it all comes down to long sequences of bits. Text messages. This YouTube video. Every web page on the internet and even your computer's operating system are nothing but long sequences of ones and zeros. Next week, we'll start talking about how your computer starts manipulating those binary sequences for our first true taste of computation. Thanks for watching. See you next week.